Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the second video in our library orientation series. In this video, we'll be looking at reference resources, talking about what reference resources are, what they're useful for, uh, and how you can start doing background research on a topic and developing the scope and breadth of your topic for any given research project. So again, like with anything, we're starting on the library website. And for today, I'll click on online resources and then electronic databases. And you see when you get to the electronic databases page and are browsing by subject, the first subject area is reference. Now, what does reference really mean? Uh, well, you may have heard of the reference desk in the library. It's where you go to ask questions and get answers. Uh, you may also have heard the terms uh, primary sources, secondary sources, tertiary sources, uh, primary sources being those things like archives, letters, journals, photographs, things that were made at the time of an event by people involved in any given event. Uh, secondary sources being things like articles, books, essays, things written about any given topic um, by someone who was not present in the first in the first hand account. And reference sources are those tertiary sources, so things uh, that provide data in um, overview form. So things like encyclopedias, maps, atlases, um, resources that are good to go to for basic information, not necessarily analytical information, information that's just facts, figures, data, uh, things like that. Um, and what reference resources are really great for is for getting started with any research topic. Because before you go into any research topic, you want to be armed with the facts. You want to be armed with the basic background information on any given topic. And these databases listed here can be a good way to get that background information uh, on any given topic. And you see they cover, a, uh, you know, there's a handful of different resources here, some of them more specific than others. So one here is just on social psychology, another one just on literary theory and criticism, another on sports in America. This statistical abstract of the United States is good for getting any kind of statistics and data related to uh, you know, US government and society from sources like the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So that's a helpful one for that kind of research. Um, annual reviews provides some access to different uh, research titles online, and you can click here to browse the different titles available. But the one that I use more than anything and that I recommend to students more than anything is this Credo Reference Database. And you see here it says an electric, electronic collection of over 500 reference titles, including encyclopedias, dictionaries, and handbooks, covering all major fields of study. Uh, so to access Credo Reference, we'll click this link, which will open the database up in a new page. Again, like I said in the first video, you always want to use the links listed here. If you're accessing from off-campus, you would have first seen a um, login page asking you for your Rosemont College email address and password. Uh, one thing you want to always pay attention to as well when accessing these electronic databases is that somewhere on the top it should say your access is provided by Rosemont College uh, or your subscription is provided by Rosemont College. That's another way to just double check that you're accessing it um, through our subscription and you're actually getting the full information that is provided in here. A lot of times, otherwise, you'll get just a, you know, a few sample articles or a trial. But if you see that it says Rosemont College, you know you're getting the real stuff. So here is how Credo Reference is laid out. At the very top, you get a big search bar, which lets you dive right in, if that's your preferred method of searching. You can also scroll down a little bit and see uh, popular research topics you can browse. Uh, and these just highlight different articles at different times. So here, biographies, sciences, humanities, all of these. If you're kind of stumped for a research topic, this can be a helpful way just to browse around and see like, oh, um, pollination, that sounds interesting. I'm going to click that link and see what they have to say about that. Uh, there are also some tips and guides at the bottom. Um, and these can be helpful uh, in addition to the resources that we provide um, to get more information or recommendations about things like how to select a topic or how to find relevant sources uh, or how to avoid bias in your searches. It's a really important one. So you're welcome to look at any of these and see if any of these are helpful to you as you work out how to do library research. So let's just click one of these and see what comes up. I said pollination sound interesting, recycling, carbon footprint. 
Uh, let's click on deciduous forest and see what we get. So here it's bringing us to a topic page for deciduous forest. Here's what the search term is in this search box. So if we had searched this, we would have also come to this page. At the top, there'll be usually an image and a basic uh, encyclopedia entry for any topic page. On the right, which is really helpful, are these uh, topic maps that come up, uh, which will link you to related topics or related research areas. And you're welcome to click around these and see you know, if, if any of these other ones interest you as you're kind of browsing around and trying to get a sense of what your research area will be. What I want to say is when you're working on a research paper, you may have an, a pretty firm idea of what you're looking for, or you may have a pretty vague idea of what you're looking for. But it's good not to come in with too much of a preconceived notion of what your research is going to tell you and how broad your research is going to be. Of course, this depends on the project at hand. You know, you might be assigned a paper that's 10 to 15 pages long, or maybe a paper that's just three to five pages long. So of course, the longer the paper the, or project, the more information you're going to need. And what's helpful about the Credo Reference Database is for any given topic, because it covers all subject areas, it gives you a good sense of how much information is out there in general on any given topic. So on something as specific as a deciduous forest, what we see listed on this page might give us an idea of whether or not there's going to be enough information out there beyond this database on this one topic. Or if we find that we're not getting a lot of entries related to deciduous forest or any other search topic, we might say to ourselves, okay, this topic area, this question, this subject doesn't seem like it's leading anywhere. Maybe I have to see some related things that the encyclopedias list and either expand my search or contract my search. And we'll see how that plays out as we start to browse some of these results. So again, there's this basic entry up here, then down below a list of other related articles. Now, like I said, Credo Reference and reference databases in general include things like encyclopedias, dictionaries, handbooks. What's nice to pay attention to as you're scrolling through these results is where these entries are coming from because that'll tell you the perspective from which each individual article is written. So something maybe more from a scientific background, or maybe some of these articles will be written from a perspective of uh, climate change activism, or even uh, industry or production. Uh, so even though you're looking at the title of the, each individual article here, it's nice that they tell you also where each article is from. So this is from the Dictionary of Physical Geography. Again, because it's a dictionary, we know this will probably just define that word and not really give much more in-depth information than a, a brief definition. European flora, this comes from the Hutchinson Unabridged Encyclopedia with Atlas and Weather Guide. So we know we can get maybe uh, some map or weather climate data in here. And you can keep scrolling through and seeing the different sources these things come from. Let's click on one of these and see what the um, article itself looks like. So we'll click on deforestation. This again could be a more specific term related to deciduous forests. So depending on how broad our topic search is or how big our research assignment is, we might want to look at specifically deforestation of deciduous forests or just deforestation in general. So here it gives you a brief definition, uh, a little bit more from the encyclopedia, and then some reference sources. At the bottom here is how to cite this article in different citation styles, APA, Chicago, Harvard, and MLA. Depending on your instructor and what research area you're working in, you might be using different citation styles at different times. Uh, these citations are usually pretty good as provided, but it's always a good idea to double check uh, against either a citation manager or an MLA or APA guide online. And here it links you to the book that this comes from, the encyclopedia. So you could browse through this book and see different articles within this book of different terms of ecology and environmental management. Again, on the right, I know this can seem overwhelming, but we have more related searches, so you could click any of these to you know, keep browsing. Related articles, another article on deforestation, uh, other ones that might be related, tropical rainforests, etc. We could click on this topic for deforestation and see what it brings. Here's another concept map now for this term versus deciduous forest. So now this links us to rainforest, logging, erosion, forestry, topical rainforest. These are things you want to pay attention to at any 
early stage of research because again, not only would this tell you how broad your topic should be, so you might want to look specifically at deforestation or specifically at erosion, but this is also going to give you an idea of terms to search when we get to those periodical databases or when we start looking at books. So it's one thing to just search for the term deforestation, but say we search in another database and nothing comes up. Well, then here we know these are some related terms that we should also try searching. We can also try searching forestry or erosion or logging in relation to this term if we find that in further research, we're not getting enough on this information. So that's another way I like to use reference databases to sort of mine subject terms for further research, in addition to getting background information and defining your research topic. So this is how that's all laid out. It looks like when we clicked on deforestation, now there are some image sources. You can see how those are laid out. Now you also may notice that it links you to different library resources, um, articles in JSTOR or Google Books. You're welcome to click through these, um, but just again, pay attention to uh, what I was telling you before about um, accessing different information through Rosemont's library website. Google Books and Wikimedia Commons are not something that the library itself manages. Um, so you have to be a little bit more careful, especially on Google Books, you might access a book and then find that you can't actually read the whole thing. If you click one of these articles from JSTOR, JSTOR is a periodical database that we'll look at later in one of uh, the next videos in this series. Uh, these will link you right to that article. But again, you'll have to log in with your Rosemont uh, email address and password to get there if you're off campus. Um, so you're welcome to try that. What you might start to notice at this stage of research is that there are many ways to get to the same information. So if we came in here knowing we wanted to search for deforestation, we could have type that in right at the beginning, click search and came, come to this page. If we didn't know what we were looking for, we could have browsed some of these other topics until we got to deforestation as something that we were interested in. And then, as you see, there are also many other ways to click around and find related subjects and related terms. Just wanna show you another example. So this is essentially how Credo Reference works. You'll see that a lot of these articles are not that different from what you might find in Wikipedia. The difference, of course, is that these articles all come from published encyclopedias that have been proofread, peer-reviewed, uh, overseen by academic publishers and experts in the field. Whereas on Wikipedia, as you know, anyone can go on and edit the information. Now, of course, on Wikipedia, you're supposed to provide citations, but that's not always the case. So it's always a good idea to use Credo Reference instead of something like Wikipedia for this background information, because you know the information on Credo is uh, accurate and has been provided by actual academic experts in the various fields. Now, I will say, I sometimes use Wikipedia myself. I sometimes use Google Search myself, just as I'm getting started on any research topic to see what's out there. It's sometimes helpful to search on Google if I don't know if I have a particular term right. Like, I don't know if it's called deforestation or say unforestation. I could search on Google for that and it might tell me. Um, but Credo Reference is really where you can dig in to get those related search terms and search topics to get actual reliable data and uh, statistics and good background information as you're starting your research. One other thing that we'll come back to later is in some of the bibliographies listed for these articles on Credo, you'll find that, okay, it tells you the sources that this article is citing. So say the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, uh, this article by Paul Harrison and Fred Pierce, uh, Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. And then you see these links next to it that's a e-journal portal. Well, what these will do is link you back to our electronic journal locator. So say you're reading this and uh, want to access the research behind this. Well, if you click these links, it'll direct you to the databases that we subscribe to that might contain these articles. Now, we don't always have access to the articles listed here, but if you click this link, and I'll show you an example here. So that one, it didn't seem like we have. But you see, it brings us to the electronic journal article. And uh, this is a good way to find um, research sort of ready-made. If you have an article here that you know you want to research more in depth, chances are you'll want to look at the things that they cited 
And these links can be an easy way to see if we have access to the things that have been cited here. So that's a handy tool that you want to pay attention to. And maybe we can spend more time with that in a further video. So again, that's the basics of Credo Reference. I hope you use it as a way, again, to develop your research topic, to come up with different search terms, and to get a sense of um, how search processes work, whether you're searching for a term, whether you're browsing or clicking through. Uh, Credo Reference is a great place to get started.